SBC Media. Welcome to the iGaming Daily podcast, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by Optimove, the number one CRM marketing solution for the iGaming market. BetsMayB has reported on its 11th consecutive quarter of growth. Leadership cites that bets and brands are now outperforming the growth of markets and competitor metrics. iGaming Daily speaks to CEO Pontus Lindball on bets and success across new and existing markets. This episode of iGaming Daily is brought to you by Optimove, the number one marketing and CRM solution for the global iGaming industry. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ted, and I'm joined by Pontus Lindwald, CEO of Betson AB, who is proudly wearing his Inter Milan shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, great to see. Great to see. Did you wear that on the investor call? I did, actually. On the call, there, there was no camera there, but there was a presentation in the financial newspaper of uh, Sweden this morning, which is quite uh, a, a big one. And uh, yeah, I had it. Can, can I just say that as a connoisseur of uh, football shirts, I, I really like what you've done with the Inter Milan sponsorship. Yeah, thank it, you. It comes really well in, in, in the, through in the shirts. Anyhow, um, you've got a lot to celebrate. So 11 quarters of consecutive growth. Reflecting on kind of your comeback as CEO to, to Betson, what does that achievement tell us about your business? Yeah, I think... Initially, there was a lot of things that I found that, that we could do with the company and uh, just had to make sure that we have, you know, that I have a very strong team around me, which is uh, committed to do all of these things. And now we've been doing that for many years and it, it pays off. Mm -hmm. And you're now confident that you're not only outperforming metrics, but you're outperforming your competitors. So what do you believe that Betson has over the competition and what Betson is bringing to kind of individual markets? It's very hard to say. I think, you know, it's it's a mix of, of course, we have a great organization and we have like, you know, we have people spread out over the world. We have teams more or less everywhere. And I, I used to say that, you know, all those teams are important. If, if you would take one single team away, then we would notice it. It, it. it wouldn't function the whole thing. So, so it's, uh, it, it's a very well oiled, big machinery, uh, with a lot of committed people that are, you know, committed and to, to do the same dream. We want to be, you know, where we are now and, 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 and be in the forefront of, of this industry. We like it. And, uh, we think it's fun and, and that helps a lot. So let's talk about bets and where it is now. Um, as CEO, are you satisfied with the current product product mix and revenue breakdown of bets in at 24% sportsbook versus 70% 70, 70 casino? Uh, do you think that's a point of exposure for your business? I think, yeah, th this quarter it was about, yeah, 24, 25% sports. And a couple of quarters ago, it was. 30, you know, th that one fluctuates depending on, on the sport book margins and, and other things. Uh, in general, I think we're in a good position. Uh, of course, there are certain markets where I want us to be bigger than we are today. We have things to improve with the product, even though we put a lot of efforts into the product and we think we have come a very long way. Yes, yeah, so to summarize, there are lots of more things to do, and that's why we continue to struggle on here. So when we are sitting here discussions, discussing this, you know, I have 2,500 people working out there to sort what's going to happen next, you know. So uh, we're not satisfied where we are today. We're going to continue. Okay, so as an executive team, we've seen bets and take big bets. One of them is being more dynamic and progressing their sportsbook platform. How does the new acquisition of Sporting Bet Solutions uh, make make you more dynamic on the on the sportsbook front? Yeah, we have been a satisfied and happy customer to to that company for for quite some time. I think it's around ten years. So so we know it well. We know how how their products fit into our sportsbook and. Uh, now 
we got the a nice opportunity to acquire the company. I I I, I think it's good. I, I hope we will. Of course, we will be more tied to to that company, and hopefully, we can uh, have some influence on on the roadmap as well. So I'm sure that's going to help. You know, to pave the way for our sports book, which has developed greatly the the past five years but it's it's such an important thing so that we will continue to to make it even better one thing that jumps out about bets and its market mix and you guys analyzing which which regions and jurisdictions you can you know you can grow in effectively you highlighted and you know wearing your into shirt you highlighted big prospects in italy uh, how do you how confident are you that that market reorganization will work in betson's favor and why are you doubling down in Italy necessarily compared to other markets? It's not only the the, the marketing teams, etc., that judge uh, which markets we should go for. It's 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 something that we analyze in the company in in in, in different from all different aspects. And uh, I think we have managed to find you know our own ways in terms of choosing which markets to go for, and that has served us well. So we have confidence in 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 what we do there, and we're going to continue to do those judgments and try to find new interesting markets that we can put our efforts into. Okay, staying in Western Europe, um, I'm sure you heard the news this week that f- French the yeah, French online casino is going to be legislated for, and you've also kind of increased your your share in your in your joint venture. What what are your market prospects in France? Um, do you see yourself making a play in that market for online casino? Yeah, Let, let's see what the regulation will be like. But that it's it's well about time, or it's almost on overtime that they introduce casino games to that market because it's been, as we all know, an open market for 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 black uh, non regulated operators. So. We believe it's about time that the licensed companies, the ones that you know, uh, work hand in hand with with the regulator that pays its, its taxes, th- that we will be the one that will serve the people who wants to play casino games in France. So it's good that it finally happens. Did Did you have any knowledge that that was going to come into play for France, or did that come as a surprise to you? Not not knowledge, but we have been you know. Of course, voicing our opinion about this, not that I think this regulation that now happens, it, it doesn't by any means come from the Betson angle. But as an industry, I think it has been obvious that, you know, something could happen there and it should happen. And now it seems that it's about to happen. Oh, perfect. So I'm now going to kind of move you kind of eastwards and... The CE has become your biggest revenue generating region. And how are you kind of maintaining that balance and sustainability, knowing that there are going to be upcoming market changes in Croatia and Georgia? And how how do you look at kind of those adjustments coming in for Betson? I, I hope that they will not, you know, change the development of, of Betson in, in, in a bad way or in, in even an, a notable way. Uh, we are used to changes in in, in market in, in many different markets, and lucky for us, we have quite a great diversity in markets. So uh, we, we hope that we can continue to to crank on well in these markets because the, the, the markets you mentioned are two important markets for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think look, it's coming up to the end of the year and. Um, everyone's um every analyst is kind of eyeing up kind of the south american opportunities now you bet big and you bet early on this market do you think that you've achieved localization in, in the south american markets that you're active in and what advantage is that to, to bets and moving forward yeah we realized uh, early that in, in order to to be able to have any kind of you know success or or you know any kind of traction in in the Latin American markets, you need to have a, a local flavor. You need you need to have a local adoptions in terms of you know payments and and all of that. And we have learned, and we have people uh, on ground 
So I think we have good, you know, we have a good foundation to, to act for in, in, in the Latin American markets. Um, going on to one brand that you acquired, and it's a particularly strong one. It's, it's Incubet in Peru. How are key upgrades going out for that subsidiary? And do you think that you can expand Incubet beyond uh, its single market play, beyond Peru? I'm sure they could. Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure it's going to happen. The Incubet acquisition has played out pretty well, but we have to remember that Betson, which is the flagship brand of, of our group, uh, has an even stronger position in, in Peru. Mm-hmm. And now uh, moving on to Brazil, and especially what we've seen as an industry in this Q3, uh, we've seen Flutter acquire Bet Nacional. We've had very positive numbers coming from Entain pre market for, for Brazil. Um, how are you monitoring? Uh, your competitors' maneuvers ahead of the market launch? And uh, do you see kind of any trends happening? Yeah. We follow what our competitors do in preparation for the market opening. Uh, And I think not only us, but uh, everyone who follows this industry can see that it's, it's going to be a strong lineup for this market opening and, and many companies that are opening up their wallets quite strongly. Uh, and uh, as, as we say in, in the report and in communication to the market, we will not put all the money that we have on the, on, on the bank, you know, and, and, and rush into the market with that. Rather, see how it develops. We will be in the market. Uh, we don't. We will not take the biggest bet initially, but rather see how it plays out. Taking kind of that balanced approach to Brazil, and from the position that you're in at the moment, uh, yeah, I'm just going to um, put it straight to you. I mean, what do you think the call rate or the kill rate is going to be in Brazil once the market is activated? Uh, that, that's impossible to say, <laughs> but. Uh, but, it's not, but you don't think it's sustainable for what's being put forth with over a hundred brands coming in? No, no, no. I, I was just about to say. I think I'm I'm trying to think about a market which has been you know up for opening up where there has been so many operators lined up. I can't think of anything like that. So it's an extraordinary situation, I would say. Okay, and coming up to the end of the year. Uh, uh, I know you, you're there wearing your, your Inter shirt, but what's what's on your Christmas list as a CEO for 2025? What do you want to see happen for, for the industry? Actually, I think uh, from the industry, I, I would like to see a discussion, you know, amongst uh, regulators and obviously at the end of the day between national states about, okay, now we have regulation, now we have taxation, in many markets, how do we make sure, you know, that this doesn't shrink or disappear? Or even how do we make sure that we can expand this part, which is the regulated part of the industry? And that is a discussion that I would really want to get going between regulators so that they could understand the dynamics between, you know, marketing, restrictions, product restrictions, high tax levels and things like that, you know, uh, that I would really, that's on top of my wish list. Well, Pontus, thank you for that caveat. And we hope that transitions to 2025. It's been a pleasure interviewing you. Have a great day. Thank you. Same to you. Bye-bye. SBC Leaders connects the gambling industry's top-tier operators and associations to share the best ideas, collaborate on solving the biggest issues, and push innovation throughout the betting and gaming industry. If you're an operator and want to join the discussion, visit sbcleaders.com for more information. Yeah, really interesting interview there, Ted. Uh, Good to get the thoughts of Pontus as they uh, kind of continue a a trajectory, an upward trajectory of growth, uh, just recording. Yeah, continued great results. Um, one thing that he kind of did uh, keep close to his chest was uh, 
the uh, the question on exposure, you know, obviously we know they're, I think, like 24% sportsbook and 70% casino. Do you think there'll be, uh, yeah, what, what were you expecting from that question? And do you think there will be a kind of fears on, on that exposure from Betson? Um, I think, look, uh, as a PLC, Betson probably need a higher percentage of sportsbook rather than casino, man, as a high risk element. And also for regulatory markets, they prefer kind of a better kind of product mix there of balance from, you know, your high risk casino games versus your kind of more controllable sportsbook elements. So I think it's kind of market regulates, so that's going to come more into play. But again, they're doing a lot of investment in that particular area, the acquisition of sports, sporting solutions. So uh, one thing that we always kind of get from Pontus is that he backs the strategy and they are one, yeah. one step ahead and they are building towards creating better platforms and becoming more self-reliant in in every every aspect of their their enterprise. So I think it's, it's an element that they've got under control. But as he said, there are so many factors in sports bets, you know, including the margins and uh, the, you know, how the fixtures play out. But I think that, you know, they will need a, a better kind of um, product makeup or a product mix. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, another thing you kind of uh, brought to the attention, I know you've covered the market in quite quite some depth, including on this podcast, is the the French market. Um, yeah, interesting to hear his thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, where, where do you think uh, Betson will be uh, thinking lies ahead for the uh, the French market? Uh, I think for now they've got to be cautious. Uh, we still don't know what the kind of real tax rate is going to be and what the, you know, what actual legislation the French market, uh, the French government are going to put into into play for online casino, how heavy that's going to be on, on compliance and compliance demands. But look, it's a big Western market coming into play. So I think all, all CEOs will have their eye on that. Uh, Western European markets that are dynamic or are fresh or nearly impossible to come by, come, come by. Um, I think all leadership will be analyzing the markets and what they can get out of it. Um, I think we'll, we'll see early by 2025 who, who takes the bite for the French market. Right. Um, another market that sort of Pontus, uh, was talking a lot about was the Latin American market. And then the results, obviously they got sort of quite a substantial growth in there. I think it was over 34%, something like that. What were your sort of thoughts on what you said about localization in that market? And what do you think that will say about their approach to entering Brazil when that opens up, hopefully later this year? It's clear that Betson trades with confidence in Latin America. It bet big early, and it's reaped the rewards of that. Uh, but I think leadership um, amongst all PLCs views Brazil and Brazil bets as completely different to, to any market in South America. It's much bigger. It's got... Um, you know, certain very um, – it's structured in a, in a much more different way to the other markets that we're seeing in South America. So, yes, uh, they've done very well in South America, but um, I think bets is a different proposition. Also, as he mentioned, uh, launching with another 100 markets at, at the same time really kind of elevates the competition. Uh I don't know how kind of sustainable the first stages of play are going to be for Brazil. And I think that is kind of in the minds of, of leadership. I don't know what you guys made out of in response, but they ever, I think everyone in Brazil is keeping their, their, their cards close to their chest. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, he, you know, he, he also gave us his Christmas wish list at your request had a, a good question to close. And I think we should close the same here. Firstly, I guess, you know, we kind of, uh, hope that markets don't disappear. How realistic are his hopes for, for the year ahead? And uh, yeah, also, what's on your Christmas wish list, Ted? What's on your Christmas wish list this year? Can I just add that I really like that? It image. was nice. It was very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, because, you know, you do see some bad ones. Where's the weird guy gaming? You know, aesthetically, I'm saying oh, it's right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd like uh, an. Inter Milan shirt, uh, if anyone from Betson <laughs> is hearing this. <laughs> but no, I think, um, I think um, you know, his vision is kind of reflective of where the market is. And it, it actually does carry a conversation. That I think leadership, the regulators, and kind of wider stakeholders need to have about the industry, right? Um, 
Can we have some harmonization on rules? Can we get like a level playing field on platforms? And again, I think there's also kind of looking back to what he said about this fear of like the Brazilian market, it's a great opportunity, right? But it is not the perfect conditions to launch a market. I don't think any any anyone in leadership wants to go active with a hundred brand with a hundred brands coming into play. And I think the fallout of that market will be will be realized quite quickly. Mm. Um, but uh, I think there's a lot of truth in what he had to say in terms of the vision for the industry. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree. I, I also agree uh, that it's it's an interesting time. It's an important time, and that that type of uh, yeah harmonization is crucial, especially if we're to combat the black market. We've heard so much about the black market, kind of the growing threat of the black market. If we're to combat that in the year ahead, and that's kind of all, all we've got time for as well. So. A uh, really good interview and good to follow up as well and kind of pick your brain after it. And I uh, hope you've made the nice list and you get your uh, Inter shirt this, this year, Ted. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for listening to today's iGaming Daily Podcast, supported by Optimove, the number one CRM marketing solution for the iGaming market. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network or check out the latest edition of the SBC Leaders magazine. Happy reading.